check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts, arts and entertainment scene. This is the D. D. Three. Hello and welcome to the podcast. I'm your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. And I'm Becky Scarcello. And there's an event coming up that I know you're excited about. I love this event. It's one of my favorite, favorite outdoor things to do in Detroit. This, Every year I look forward to this it. This is Dally in the Alley. Mm-hmm. All right. This is where I get to play my new guy card and say I haven't been yet. You haven't been to the Dally? No, but it's been going on for a long time. Long right? time. Yes. Yes. Well, we brought in a very special guest for the podcast today. This is a guy who he's really a cultural contributor to the city of Detroit. He has produced hundreds of events here in the city and really all over the world. Uh, For example, in 2000, he was instrumental in launching the Detroit Electronic Music Festival. He's also been involved with uh, Eastern Market After Dark or Dine Drink Detroit. And of course, coming up this Saturday, September 7th, Dally in the Alley. Want to welcome to the podcast, Adriel Thornton. Hey, how's it going? How are you? Good, I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. So for somebody like me, who's been living under a rock for 42 years, (laughs) (laughs) what is Dally in the Alley? Where is it? What happens? What's it all about? It's surprising because you're not the only one who who just hasn't made it down there yet. But um, I like to, I think, you know, me and the team like to describe Dally at this point as it's more or less like a, it's a block party on steroids. Um, it really is uh, in its 42 year history as we, it's it is a true celebration of life in the cast quarter um, so it includes art um, we have a community stage there's a kids fair and of course there's music um, food vendors regular vendors <laughs> it's 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 truly um, uh, in my eyes it's 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 um, one of the most Detroit events, I think that you can go to because it's every you've been, yeah, and it's every type that. of person. You can't mm-hmm. really lock the demographic down. It is everybody. It's a big melting pot, super yeah. fun, and you will not see one corporate sponsorship shine right. sign anywhere. Right. So that's very unique. It's fully independent. Yep, Dally has uh, again. It's forty two years old, um, and it started as a protest event. Um, against actually Wayne State was going to tear down some historic buildings, whatever. And so some hippies in a back, you know, <laughs> yeah. lived on one of the alleys, decided to, you know, grab a guitar and, and a barbecue pit and have sort of like a protest, you know, um, and that's how it really kind of started. So in that time, you know, it's never been like the true roots of it being a true community event and one that was not beholden to other interests. Um, it's something that we currently like, you know, hold ourselves to, you know, we feel beholden to every other group of per- people that, has, that have produced a dally before us. Now, how long have you been working with the event? I, I joined really in around, I think 2009 may have been like the first. So about a decade now. Yeah. Yeah. Which, wow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies. Well, let right. me ask, because that cast corridor is an area that's changed. I imagine, especially Dramatic. a lot in a the lot. last 10 years. Dramatically. Yeah. Uh, how have you seen it change, and how has that affected Dally? Um, you know, it's it's it, when I used to, I used to live down there. Um, actually, one of the <laughs> one of the uh, our alley stage, the building that that uh, it's in the parking lot of an apartment building. I used to live in that apartment building. Oh, okay. So I, I I did my time as being a resident of when Dally was going. Okay, on. you're legit then. Yeah, All right. and you know it was a different it was a different era back or it, it was it was a different area back then. It was. Um, Lots of, I mean, that was like, Cast Corridor was like where the funky people were, you know, so it was the artist, it was students, you know, you had some people who were working in the medical <laughs> campus and everything nearby, but it really was like sort of ground central, I think, for like the creative hub. of the, It was like more mm-hmm. like less the creative hub of the city. And I think that some of that is still there, but it definitely is, um, I mean, you can get you can get a loft in Midtown now, in Midtown, <laughs> for you know that they're selling them for like five hundred thousand dollars or more. You know that was not that was not happening. <laughs> like, like, don't look at me and say you can get a loft. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> not you personally. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but you know, like you, you know, it's uh, so that was definitely not not happening. Uh, there, and that's you know, I'm not saying that that's a good or bad thing. It's just a difference. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, rents are up. You know, I mean, but but it's also a huge influx of people so there's arguably a lot more people living in that area now too and so you really can see it at Dally um, you know I think when I started it was it was still it was I mean a 
pretty big event, but it was, I mean, much smaller on the scale, right? So, but according to uh, the police department in the city, last year we did 135,000 people. Wow. You know, yeah. That's in 12 hours, right? So yeah, it's- Yeah, one day, a few blocks, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's a, you ask yourself, I think what's happened over the past 10 years is that there's, there's also been an uptick in um, sort of like the, I call it the festival movement. I think there are like a lot more festivals now than there used to be. Um, and I think that uh, people have really sort of gravitated to, to them uh, in a different way than they used to in the past. So there's that. There's the growth of that period. Has that helped or has that hurt? I mean, does it mean more people are used to going out to events like this? So. Well, yeah. So, I mean, you know, again, though, it's... It looks like a festival. It is. I mean, it's, it, for all intents and purposes, it's a one-day festival. But we really do. We frame it, or we like to think of it as a community event. So it's. I think that there's a slight disconnect with you know people who want to come and want it to be a festival, like a, you know Coachella mm-hmm. Part Two, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> or something like that, where it's really, um, it's really not that, and that's not what it was really designed for. So um, we are um, all volunteers. So, I mean, you know, the pre-planning and things like that, there's, there's 10 to 13 of us that are really there consistently that sort of make it up. Um, and I'm doing the math. That's one person for every 10,000 people. Yeah, yeah <laughs> sure. right, right. That's a lot of responsibility. Right. right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the day of, you know, and let me just, I do have to say this, that uh, Dally is produced by the North Cass Community Union. So that is who we are. We So there's a Dally Committee and then there's the NCCU, and so all but all the all the NCCU chairs or positions are like I'm co-president of the NCCU right now, right? But I'm mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a different chair for Dally, you know what I'm saying? But we all are actively part of Dally. But there's a there's a host of volunteers that come and help out. There's obviously a, a lot more additional people that come in day of, um, and so there's there's you know it's not. Us taking care of that whole management. Right, right. Whole no, I get it. I get it. Right. You outsource. Right, 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 right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we have it, to. I think a good way to get a flavor for it, too, is to go, I think it's right on your website, all the past posters. Yeah. The incredible poster art over the years. I feel like you look at those and you can kind of get a sense of what it's all about. Yeah, I think you really can. And so it's really interesting. Like this year's artist is a bird child um, who, who has done, I think his poster is like one of them darker posters that yeah. we had but I, I i really dig it it's cool yeah it's super cool and um one thing to notice about the posters and you may or may not know this um the continuing thread through them all because every um every year we basically have an, a new poster designer but the continuing theme with the one thing it has to have on it other than some text that has you know a cat has to be somewhere yes. in it right <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> an alley cat yeah. does the cat have a name we're, it's Alley Cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you'll see around the festival too. Yeah, yeah, because you'll actually see because I mean, and, yeah, it legit happens. There's you know the the part of it is in an alley. So, mm-hmm. well, I think too the uh, another thing that's changed is safety, either real and perceived. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Seth, like back in the day, I mean, Cass Corridor was definitely known for. People doing drugs, you know, prostitution, right. mm-hmm. you know. But I think even in the early days, Daly was like, okay, that's a safe day to kind of right, go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, it's a big party, and I think that everybody um, who goes there wants wants it to be a big party. Yes. Like wants to have a good time, community feel, and, and it people does, take care of each other. And, yeah. So yeah. even those, you know, the the. The hookers and the dealers could go too. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> and they want to have a good time too. Exactly. You know, so it's not. Um, you know, it never, it never felt like it was um, something that wasn't safe. Um, I do have to say that from a safety perspective, one thing, another thing that's changed um, is you know the really unfortunate events that have happened at mass gatherings like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've instituted some things like, I mean, we have off-duty police officers who are now helping with security. Um, there's a, you know, there are defined entrances and exits now. Um, we have to do some light fencing um, and stuff like that just to, to institute a, a few, you know, a bit more control. Interesting, over it. Yeah. And that's really done to keep people safe um, and to not just make them feel safe, but for it to be a safer event. You know, even structurally, you know, there's engineers that, you know, the staging has to has to get engineering, like, you know, 
uh, sign offs and things like that to see. Yeah, there's a lot of work you got to do. You got to deal with the fire department, and the yep, health, yep. health mm-hmm. and all that kind Proper of stuff. Proper egresses, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So there's a lot of things that logistically go, you know, go in behind the scenes that, you know, hopefully, you know, your average attendee will never see, right, never right, have to right. think of, right. you know, That's so. The goal. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned the parts of this event that make it different than other festivals. Can mm-hmm. you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Um, well, so, so, I don't want to, I think, so there's, there really is, I think, a different atm- a different vibe with Dally, right? And I'm not saying it's anything goes, but it is, you know, we're just a bunch of weirdos in a basement who put together t- Dally, right? So there's, um, I think, first of all, a lack of pretense. Yes. It goes along with it. And because it's, you know, from a, like, a music standpoint, like the band standpoint, it's multi-genre. You know, it's, you know, you've got some electronic acts, you've got indie rock, uh, indie rock acts, you've got hip hop, you've got, you know what I'm saying? You've got a wide variety of music. So it attracts um, a lot of, you know, different types of fan bases and everything there. But everybody, again, just wants to be there. And it's cool. Also, it's 42 years old. So there are people, literally some people on our committee started going to Dally as children, like their parents would bring mm-hmm. them to Dali as children. So mm-hmm. um, a lot of people, and I know that like one of the, my favorite things about Dali is um, it's kind of a family reunion for a lot of us. You know, it's your friends and things that you, you know, even though you may live in the same city, you still don't get to see all that often, but we can almost bet, <laughs> you know, that you will go and see people, you know, you like you can almost go alone. Right. <laughs> you know and what I'm just, saying? It's just because you, you know you're going to run into people oh, that you yeah. know. I would go along there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, you know you're going to run into people you know. Um, but again, it's it's the to me the the thing that really sets it apart um, is that it it by its just very nature celebrates uh, all of us, right? So it's it's what you would expect to see at a big city event, which is everybody. It really is. It's. It's. I mean, there are different times of the day where the you know the crowd flips a little bit. So you know, earlier it's people with with you know there's a lot more families, um, a lot more seniors. You know, people who really want to um, come in and casually check it out <laughs> before the insanity starts. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, that's why we do a kids fair, right? For instance, from like noon to four, and it's to it's to to have something for those people for families and things to do. Um, and it's just, it's a little bit more relaxed. And then, of course, as, you know, the night comes, falls upon us, <laughs> the, the drinks have been flowing in. for a little bit. I and, and, you yeah. know, <laughs> I get to break out my glow sticks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can. Yeah. It's welcome there. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, and I think you just hit the. the those, are, those are really just in my glove compartment in case my car breaks down. That's really. <laughs> <the> right. <place>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there are, there are people who are going to be, I'm sh- there will inevitably be somebody t- doing a fire twirl or something. I mean, <laughs> right. Happens, yes. right? But um, spontaneously, th- it does. I'm telling you, it does. It's just like we have to go and be like, "Can you put those out?" Like, yeah. like a, fire a lot of people here, yeah. right? Yeah. But um, you hit the nail on the head. I think uh, just a moment ago, where you said, um, "You always feel welcome," oh, right? Yes, and I think yeah. that's another thing that sets it apart too. Is that it's um, you? I think people, the majority of people, um, feel so welcome there, and it's not like by des- it's not by design. You know, like I said, it's, you know, there are lots of people who have been going there for years, year after, you know what I'm saying, for a long time, and they wouldn't miss it. Um, I know one of them um, should probably get mad at me for calling her out on this, but that just popped in my head. Uh, she's actually another promoter um, named Sue Summers, who, um, little, she has not, like, missed a dally. It hasn't, um, she gets, a, she's first in line <laughs> to get the poster. Every year, like nice. that's and I know I can count on seeing like <laughs> that she'll be there yeah. getting this, po- you know. So um, I think it's it's because again, like you know, everybody is welcome, and that's not really easy to you know. I, I feel like, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of events strive to be that way, but like because they're usually um, they're usually so music driven, yeah. That like if you're not into that. You know, you may feel mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. not as welcome in a sense, not or as comfortable. Cool kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so if somebody wants to get involved, like they want to volunteer, mm-hmm. or whether it's uh, a musical artist that wants to perform, or, or mm-hmm. some other performing artist, how do they do that? So the best thing to do is we we 
um, the website is the portal to everything, but we do really, we have an active Facebook page. Um, and I would say that is probably the, the I would start looking on the Facebook page mm-hmm. for opportunities. So, um, like performances and things like that, we, you know, that process opens and closes at certain times. Um, as roughly the, when are you booking? We, we start, I think, you know, we start March, Okay. you know, through, I think this year it was like, March, April, like May, like May, we cut it off sort of, I think. Yeah, I think I remember the musicians had to be in by June 1st or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the same thing, you know, with the vendor applications and then the food, you know. Yeah. So there, there are, time, you know, limits or times to everything, but we always um, blast it out on our social channels. Um, so that's one thing. But also, I mean, I would just encourage people to, you know, to, to just sort of check back and look. Um, we... You know, we're, we're not so organized that I could tell you the day after Dally that yeah, we're going to no, have, the, have new, right. the new dates <laughs> up. <Schedule> right? <laughs> Nobody moment. expects that. Right. 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 You get, you get, I don't know. People expect that. Some people expect people that. Do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about <laughs> producing events because this is something you've done a lot of. And this yeah. is hard work. It is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it is a lot of work. work. And, right. and, and you've been recognized for it uh, by both the state, the city. You've been mm-hmm. called an ambassador of cultural goodwill. Mm-hmm. So what's involved in that? Yeah, and I already you, told him I'm changing do, it. It's the do that. it's, it's the um, ambassador of awesomeness right. because right. it's just it, it encompasses so many great things, and you're still here smiling and laughing right. and like want to do more. So right, um, you know it's uh, it's. Um, what does that involve? <laughs> you have to get confirmed by the Senate. I mean, right? Yeah, <laughs> it involves. Well, you know, the thing is, um, so I started off as a rave promoter. Okay, you know, and I think that. Um, you know, it probably takes a, a certain personality type to be a promoter. You know, how how yes, it does, and mm-hmm. and the, this part I'm not good at. How do you promote raves? Like, what do you right. what, what do you do? <laughs> and and well, how so were you doing it back then? Was it Craigslist? Was it just <laughs> like, handing out flyers? Was it you know? Okay, when no, I you telegrams. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, when right. I started, damn near when I started, there was no such thing as the internet. No, so, oh, no. Right. <laughs> We're talking about the early 90s. Mm-hmm. So there was no internet. So were you flyering? What yeah, you, you flyer. Right, postering. Yeah. Just, postering, just flyering, you know, and going to other events, you know. Yes, so, yes. Um, I mean, you you know, there was also a different sort of structure set up then. So, you know, record stores were still around. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, um, and... I remember just going to record stores to find out about all the yeah, cool stuff. exactly, yeah. yeah. They'd have the big table with all the all flyers. All the flyers, yeah, and yeah. And the people that work there would know. And, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, you had, you know, well, the, you know, the web, we had our own web, right? But, the, you know, which were physical locations or real people. Um so the, I mean, the process, which is how it is for most events, is really, as the producer of it, you um, you put together all that, you get all the pieces assembled, right? Because you have some vision of what you want it to, you know, look like and feel like. So you know, you get you hire DJs, you get a venue, um, and oftentimes you have to get you know a sound system, lights, all of that, um, and then you come up with like you know whatever that concept is going to be for the flyer. Um, get it out, or the image, I should say, um, and then you got to hit the streets, and, and mm-hmm. you know the street. Well, back then you had to hit the streets of the street. You still have to today. Well, how is it different uh, today? I mean, I assume you just you use an Instagram and well, yeah, it's, subreddits or something. It's I, you know, I'm, yeah. You still have to put some of that work in. I mean, it's especially in you know a lot of the events that I do, the smaller scale things like the club events, um, are you know it's still a, a very it's a it's a scene. Right, so it's a little different than like a dally. Um, so you got to put your work in, and you still got to go to other people's events. I mean, you should want to anyway, right? right. But right. You, you know, you gotta you gotta be you gotta be you gotta present, be seen, right? Yeah, and you have yeah. to be seen. Um, and so you're still doing that sort of network. But the the I, I think the the opportunity to reach just such a wider group of people. Um, and whether that's a good or bad thing, you know, <laughs> depending on how people feel about the scene at any given moment. But um, it's just so much, you know, I literally with a few clicks of a button can reach far more people than mm-hmm. I ever could with flyers, you know. And it's, you know, it's, you know, being delivered to them basically, you know. Uh, so, you, you know, this you're not hoping that someone goes and gets that f- that flyer from the right. register or Right, whatever. right, right. You have a little more control. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, like I said, a f- much further reach. 
Don't you feel though too the the bigger our reach, the more noise there is though. Yes, because it's, it's like there's more people, but there's a lot more events, and yep. it's just so noisy. Yep. It is. It's super noisy, and I I mean I hate to. Say, <laughs> this is gonna sound really weird as a promoter, but um, like I I really go I really look at the events I get invited to on Facebook. It's too many. Right. Yeah. It's too much, it, and yeah. I can't like. You go nuts. You, you yeah. notice Facebook has recently it's been saying oh so and so posted an event that you might want to go to. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. It's a yes. Yeah, yeah, they're changing their algorithms, which I think. I mean, actually, I, sh- I said that, but um, it's been th- the the way that they've they're presented it now is a little better, um, you know. But uh, you know, you still just get invited to so many things, right? And that's what I'm talking about. It's or just it'll like, say have... your friend, <coughs> you know, so and so friends have responded to 800 events. Right. <laughs> like yeah. then I gotta go look at all the events my right. friends are going to. And right. It's just, right. How do you? Right. Yeah. It's. I mean, you know, and I, th- I think that's part of. I, I suspect that it's. Um, it's a, I suspect that if I had not had the experience before of mm-hmm. how I sought things out or like how I found out about things that this would probably be not be as di- not d- difficult is the right word but um, it wouldn't be as challenging yep. you know what I'm saying oh, yeah. okay. um, so when you get brought on is it after there's already an event you know, so somebody's got an event that they're already producing, and then they bring you on to help market it. It depends, yeah. So um, something like Eastern Market After Dark, um, for instance, which um, um, me and Melinda Anderson were producing for. Um, well, now it's Month of Design, mm-hmm. but it used to be the, the Detroit Design Festival when we. Uh, when sorry, it, was it was only uh, like ten days, and now yeah, it's a whole month. Right, yeah. right, right. But now. Um, um, so, so, like, Keanu uh, Wenzel now is the sort of producer of it now, and we, me and Melinda, are assisting in other ways. Um, but, yeah, it, it depends on, like, say, um, like, with that, for instance, I was brought on initially to do street promo for them. Um, which, again, taking flyers and brochures and stuff around, having a team that went out and did that, um, but then specifically working on Easter Market After Dark. Um, so that's, that's a, you know, um, what you would call, like, a for hire you know, um, but then there's things like the I do a monthly at Deluxe Flux, um, and that was that is a like self generated hmm. project. And tell everybody you know, who may not know because it's still relatively new mm-hmm. about Deluxe Flux. Oh yeah, it's a it's actually a it's a really cool club downtown. Love um, it. It's in the it's you you get to it through um, the belt. Which is that you know that funky alley downtown with all the all the murals and graffiti on it, um, and so then you go downstairs. It's in the basement, but the even the artwork in it, like a couple of the co-owners are um, uh, actually an artist collective. Um, so they have like that neon room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, yeah, it's unbelievable. It the neon room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really it's, I think one of the most well done clubs of late. Um, yeah. Like in the city, it, it is one of the best places to take a selfie. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. it, it is the right. selfie capital right For now. Sure. <laughs> yeah. My Facebook profile still my right. deluxe flex. Which, and I don't, I don't know if they intended that, but that it, that's really smart. Marketing. I think it's part yeah. of it. Yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah. I mean, you don't do a room like that and expect it's no one's going to like. <laughs> right, nobody. No. Yes. I think there. I mean, there's even restaurants now that you're. It's curated for Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Like yeah. the Pinkies rooftop in Royal Oak, or yeah, it's just it's. Made, oh yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, it's made for that. Yeah, it's made, yeah, it has some some sort of Instagrammable thing mm-hmm. about it. Um, so what do you, what do you do on your monthly nights there? So it's it's house and techno, um, and it was um, the DJs um, Matthias and Marshall Applewhite were the residents. Um, we just celebrated. Well, actually, we we were going to celebrate our one year anniversary. Uh, this past August because it's every fourth Friday but there was a uh, sadly that night there was a plumbing issue oh, <laughs> at no. Deluxe so we had to yeah. close and shut it down cool. uh, exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> That's what it is. Right. Yes. But but so I was just going to say that um, now that we're a year in, um, uh, because we started, they, they opened at the beginning of August in 2018. Yeah, just had the and, one year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so we started later that month, on the fourth Friday. So, um, um, but I'm probably, I'm likely going to change the concept up a little bit, but it'll be basically the same. But, you know, it's a year in, I get bored. Do you yeah. you have to <laughs> yes. do that? Do you have to reinvent just to keep it fresh and new? I don't, you know, I don't I don't know if that's necessarily. I, well, let me say this. For me, I do. Um, you personally want yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, you also, you know, f- from a 
creative standpoint, you know, I, you know, I hate, this is going to sound really pretentious or whatever, but you know, pr- produ- event production is my art. Right, so yeah, that's not pretentious. we okay. we get it. I mean, yeah. right. at, at this very moment, we are having a lot of uh, conversations about this podcast, which is yes. right. our art. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, and, and where do we go? And we're getting bored. And, and and yeah, and how do we keep it stimulating for, for us? As exactly. Well as everybody else. Exactly. So you know, it's 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 something that I've. Um, I mean, but you know that I I like to change and do things. However, it's like. Um, one of my most famous club nights that I've ever done was this night called Family, which was at um, used to take place at Motor, and I did it on Tuesday nights for three and a half years, um, and it was the same. And then we did we do anniversary parties, so that's still like every year we try to do one. I haven't in the past couple of years, but it's coming back this year. Um, and but it's so that's like a concept that has existed and been around for a long, long, long time. time. Yeah, you know, but it also it just depends on. What it is, you know. And so, what's your creative process like? How do you tap into like inspiring what's going to come next? It's or? really, um, it's difficult to say. I mean, I'm, I'm. There might be something like. I mean, it might be like a. I might see an ad in Surface Magazine or something like that. Um, or, you know, um, what's always been a driving factor is is um, mu- the music itself. You yeah. know, there might be a track that, you know, if it's just hits me the right way. It's, I mean, I've, I've literally built parties around a record before. That's like cool. just, you know, no one else knew that, you know what I'm saying? But it was like, oh, I Wait. want it to be like this and I want it to sound G- like give this. Give me an example of that. Um, I can't. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I could give, I could give you a, like a, a, actually I can, I can give you a perfect example of it. Okay. So there's, um, so also at this place called Zoots, which was in the cast corridor. Yeah. <laughs> Zoots Coffee yeah, House. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did a Monday night there that was all ambient. Called um, experimental was well, yeah experimental audio transmissions but um, and that was really inspired by a lot of just ambient music that was coming out and real deep minimal stuff that was happening so there were um, tracks like Born Under a Rhyming Planet um, has this track called Analog Heaven right um, and I mean that that I th- might have been one of the first records that we played at that night you know and it was um, Sort of design and conceptualize around that track, which still to this day, I mean, it's on my it's on my phone right now. I, I like yeah. it's never without like I'm okay, never it without. set the tone and this vibe right, and had right. some kind of vibration that spoke right, to you, right? And, yeah, and then you know, then you know, like I said, other things visually, you know, um, what was uh, another thing that would be like inspiring. Um, and unlocks that process, which you don't really see a whole lot of anymore, but really album art. Oh my gosh! Yeah, was such a was such an inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, you really could. I mean, you know, I've I've gone and like <laughs> again, like gotten records. You know, and just got lost in like the the how the artwork was, mm-hmm. um, which then inspires you to do. Uh, you know, <laughs> create the look or the, right. or the room they were in or right. the backdrop. Yeah, it's cool. Let me ask you about one other thing, which is your work with Mogo. Yeah. Uh, we, so, so these are the bikes that we see all over the yep. city. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. So I'm the director of marketing and community outreach for them. Um, so I do, I'm selling it now. Right. Yeah. 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 I, uh, I'm sensing a theme. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. At least I'm consistent in that way. Right. Um, but yeah. So uh, Mogo is Detroit's um, public bike share system. And I should say Metro Detroit's public bike share system because we are going to be expanding into southern Oakland County and mm-hmm. northwest Detroit. Um, so um, it is, you know, basically what a bike share system is, is really it, it's you can ride it recreationally. Of course, you know, people can ride bikes however they want to. But it really is. It's a it's really designed bike share systems around the country and the world are really designed to be transportation systems. Right. So they're really designed to get you from point A to point B. And, and that's what we do. Um, and I think we do it really well. Yeah, you know? it's, I we know just we just launched uh, our, our e-bikes. Yeah, the e-bikes, the electric pedal assist, and bikes. that's going to be a game changer because people don't realize how far they can go with those. Right, right. Oh, and, and, they're, and they're doing it. They're, they're yeah. <laughs> like, and I imagine you can serve more people that maybe are a little bit older or don't have the physical capabilities yeah, and that's, as much. That's yeah. a big. Um, that's really a big. You know, when you say game changer, um, it really is. Like uh, when you. Like you just said, when you consider people who um, uh, are not 
don't have the stamina or what for whatever the reason or the endurance whatever, can't yeah. ride or, regular, or like maybe riding a regular two wheel bike is a challenge for them. Then um, the, the pedal assist things really make a difference. I, you know, Detroit is not the most hill, hilly you know city in the world, but there are some, mm-hmm. and it really is. I mean, it changes it for me. Like, and I, every time I I'm, <laughs> I can't glow enough about them. Um, being able to go, you know, once we're our office is downtown. Um, but we might have meetings in Midtown or somewhere like that. And, you know, jumping on an e-bike and getting there and you get off and you're not sweating. Yeah. You know, that's, nice. <laughs> that's, yeah, the key. that's really nice. Right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, so uh, it's it's been a game changer for us as well. But, I mean, our regular bikes are fine, too. <laughs> well, and speaking of bikes, I, did I read this right at Daily? You'll have a bike valet? Yeah. yeah. So um, Metropolis will be doing the bike valet um, there for us. We really uh, want to encourage people to, to not drive, if they can help it, just not drive down mm-hmm. there to that area because mm-hmm. it's, it's always a mess. A mess. Um, but we also have two mogul stations um, that will serve, you know, um, on, one at Prentice and the second, and then the other one at Hancock and Cass. Um, the bike valet, which normally is right at Prentice and second, that entrance, um, and then um, lift. Uh, is doing a code, um, nice. so and they'll have um, their pickup and drop off location is going to be uh, more like Woodward, Woodward Warren area, mm-hmm. which is a couple of blocks away, but you know still right there. That's good. It's just easier for them to get in and out at that point. Yeah, very cool. All right, Adriel, are you ready to play a little game? Sure. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. Just tell us the first thing that comes to mind. Okay. Starting with this, what's the first place in Detroit that you take out-of-town visitors to? Oh, you know, usually Campus Marshes. Campus Marshes Park downtown. It's truly the heart of downtown. Um, it's a, it's beautifully done. It's award-winning. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's just such a great look for the city. Mm-hmm. It's got a beach now too. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah a gathering it's spot. It's, right. Yeah, yeah, fountain. <laughs> got it all. Do you have a favorite song by a Detroit artist? I do, actually. Okay, good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was hoping you'd say that. I do. Um and it, I mean it continues to to be one of my favorite songs. It's it's been out for a while, but Strings of Life by Derek May. There's a specific mm-hmm. mix of it called the flamboyant mix. Um which every Every time I hear it, again, that's another one that's in, on my phone that stays with me. Um, it just it it just it makes me get up and dance so much. You throw a lot of parties, mm. so maybe you could answer this. What is the best place to throw a kid's birthday party? <laughs> oh, um, I'm going against type here, right? <laughs> <laughs> How about McDonald's? It's like <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, you know, um, it's it, yeah. For it's that's a really interesting question um, for kids. Um, you know what? You know where I would, what I have always thought would be a really interesting place. And if I had my birthday party there, if I was a kid, it would be great. You know where the, where Wheelhouse Detroit is on the riverfront, where mm-hmm. that carousel is, and that whole little area yeah. there. I think would be so much fun to to have like if they. I don't. I know that they rent it out sometimes for different types of events, like school yeah. events. But I don't know if they'll let you have like a birthday party there yeah. or whatever. But you probably could just go and show up. Yeah. You know? but, yeah. And I think that that would be what fun would that be? And you don't have to rent anything. <laughs> There's tables, chairs, yeah, yeah. Plaza. That's I, a good I, I've got a two-year-old kid who loves Wheels on the Bus. So uh, if, you know, maybe if you could. Uh, Tell me how you turn that song into a party. But. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Without going mad. Right. There are some buses you can rent. I mean, there's, yeah. <laughs> That's true. There That's is true. like, there's literally a you party bus. The tumble bus. Right. Yeah, you can do the on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you know any weird Detroit trivia facts that you could share? You said this was family friendly, right? No, <laughs> well, no, just no, radio. I was just, yeah. I was just ra- radio friendly. No, um, <laughs> Um, I yeah I do. Oh, here's here's a well, it's a random weird. Well, it's not really that random or weird, but um, the f- I'm pretty sure it's the country's first kindergarten class was actually started in Detroit by an African American teacher. Really, really, mm-hmm. I had not heard back that. in the day. Um, uh, you know, lack of opportunities, blah blah blah. Um, yeah. so, um. Yeah, I can't think of her name, but it. Uh, if you look it up, I'm sure you can find it. But yeah, it was actually. Uh, Started here in Detroit and by an African-American woman. Love that. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Who is a Detroiter 
whose name everyone should know. Mine. No, <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> True. Now they will. Oh, you but, know, but no, I have, I have a really good one. You, you like, are, you're a behind the scenes guy. In a lot right, of ways, right, right. Yeah, you? yeah. I, re- I would rather people know the events I work on than, yeah. than know my name. But um, I think I think that you know I'm gonna do two okay. if that's cool. One is Lauren Hood, who is um, she's she's gotten pretty known in, in the social justice work circles and um, but she is brilliant and always has been uh, and really 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 has um, a lot of a lot of things to say she does a lot of consulting now um, and uh, started this thing called I think it's deep dive Detroit um, which really encourages people to have open and frank conversations about um, race and recidivism and all those types of things, returning citizens, you know, she, she's really uh, popping off, really. She was the um, uh, first executive director of Live 6 mm-hmm. uh, in the city. And then the other one is someone who probably is something that every, someone that everybody knows, which is Jason Hall. Yeah, um, he's been yeah. on the podcast. Okay, friend, nice. Friend of the pod. Yeah, yes. friend of the pod. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so he, he's working at the the track store like, where they do all the electronic yeah. bikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, what is it? Electric Avenue, I think mm-hmm. is what it's yes. called. We're, I mean, it, it, you know, I'm friends with both of them, which is funny. Jason was a rave kid. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. I believe it. Yeah, you know? same age yeah. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. So, um, um, yeah, I think I think those are two people that that people should definitely know. Awesome. All right. Nice. Very well done. Adriel Thornton, thank you so much. Uh, the big event is Saturday. It's Dally in the Alley. Uh, everybody can go check it out and find all the details at dallyinthealley.com. And you have any other events going on this month? At um, yeah, Easter Market After Dark is on September 19th. That's a Thursday. Um, Where do people go for info on that? Um, they, uh, they can go to Month of Design or if they go to designcore.org, I think. Um, they can find out information about us there. Yeah, I think that there's is. even a um, DetroitMonthOfDesign.com. Yeah, I will website. have to. Yeah, I get I get so lost in the weeds sometimes yeah. that I forget what Eventbrite, that is. Right, it's all right. Over, yeah, yeah, it's all, it is all over the place. Yeah. Um, I did want to mention though, DailyInTheAlley.com. It's nice on there. You have the whole schedule of the bands. Mm-hmm. You've got the vendors. I think there's some cool vendor stories. Like I remember getting my first Detroit is a New Black T-shirt. Oh yeah, from Daily, yeah. and then all yeah. of a sudden they have this fancy, awesome right. store on Woodward. So you, right. you know. It's cool. The There's thing. a lot. I, you know, I, I know we're running out of time, but one of the things I have to say that's cool about Dally too is that whether it's the bands or even a lot of vendors or whatever, there's a lot of um, new things or up and coming things that that show up at Dally that then turn into like Greta Van Hansen. I think it was it Greta, Greta Van Fleet. Greta Van Fleet. They played, played a, Dally. They played a Dally before they were in. You know, yeah. so many groups have done that where Dally was like the biggest show that they've ever played and then they go and, and blow up after that which yeah, I mean I'm yeah. not saying it's because of Dally but I kind of am yeah. <laughs> but, but it's, it's a good chance to see bands it first is, yeah, yeah and so, but also the t- you know things like t-shirts and stuff like artwork, that artwork yeah artwork yeah. It's, a, it's a great place to discover things cool well all the info's over at dallyinthealley.com uh, Adriel thank you so much for joining us yeah this thank was you. great thank, thank you, you. Uh, until next time Detroit's moving keep up The D Brief your guide to Detroit's art and entertainment scene we